that you are a slave, Neo. Like everyone else, you were born into bondage, born into a prison that you cannot smell or taste or touch. A prison for your mind. Things are escalating daily. Every day we watch this whole narrative begin to take shape and expand into something far greater and far reaching. And the general public is now starting to take more notice because they are being affected in their pockets. Though most people don't really know what is going on and why. The news tells everyone to blame Russia and that is what everyone is doing. And you are basically a traitor now if you have a view contrary to what the mainstream news dictated by the West is conveying. For me personally, I am not on one side or the other. In regards to what this current narrative is right now, none of this has anything to do with me. I am not one of those people who actually believe that Putin is fighting against the New World Order. Just like people believe that Trump was doing this when he was in office. That's garbage. None of that is true, nor does it even matter. Because the world is still moving in the same direction and towards the same goal. I've spoke about it in many videos, so there's no reason to keep saying the same thing. Either you live in truth, or you're more comfortable with lies. And that's what I have to share this week. The really hard thing for people to really understand is that we have been at war for over a century. It is a silent war though, that has been waged against several generations. And with each generation, the war escalates, getting stronger and bolder. And because of the strength and penetration of this war, there is a major separation amongst the population. This war that I'm speaking of is not physical, which is why it has been able to be waged silently. Now don't misunderstand me, there is a spiritual war being waged as well, and it's severe. But this is not the war that I'm speaking about. This war that I'm speaking about is mental, and it is very important that you understand it. A prison for your mind. All that is happening today is all about our mental conditioning, and it is your decision if you decide that you want to live in the truth or live in the lies. They have been programming our subconscious for decades, priming us to be ready for where this world is heading. It is imperative that you build your strength in Yah to combat against the narratives of this world and place yourself fully in the will of Yah. It's very hard to communicate with those that desire to live under the lies or that refuse to even see that they're being deceived. But there are a lot of people today that understand the truth, but they still choose not to live through it. And it is this group that I'm trying to reach this week. Understand, there is a difference between knowing the truth and deciding to live through it. There's a difference. Let's begin. So I have family and friends that I have been speaking about where this world is heading for years. But they have always been in and out of it. Choosing what they want to consider and what they want to ignore taking the truths that are easier to accept and casting down the harder truths that forces them to make serious changes. But now we are at a period in time where these half measures and halfway decisions will come to affect everyone, including them. So before I go more into this message, let me first explain what I expect during these times of conflict that we're at right now. We're headed to war. We are headed to a collapse of our financial system. These are two major events that I have been warning about for years in this ministry. We are just right now going through the narratives that they are using to frame it for the people around the world to believe. What I expect is increased escalation because I do not believe that they want the masses to just become numb to it like they did with Afghanistan and Iraq. They have been conditioning the public to be ready for pain, but to focus their anger not on the Western governments, but against Putin and Russia. Putin's war is already hurting American families at the gas pump. And with this action, it's going to go up further. I'm going to do everything I can to minimize Putin's price hike here at home. I have seen news reports saying that Americans are willing to pay higher prices at the gas pump if it means helping stop Russia. I've never heard one person ever say this. Are you willing to pay more for gas if it meant more restrictions on Russia? Uh, personally, yeah, I probably would, honestly. It's, yeah. Would rather support Ukraine in whatever we can. If that means gas prices hike up, like, I would, I would pay it. You see, they use this as a way of telling the public how to feel 
as things begin to escalate. Others feel this way, so maybe you should feel this way as well. It's manipulation. Everything that is happening right now is all about priming the minds of the general public to accept the narrative that they are selling. They want everyone to believe that the inflation and the rise of prices that the world is experiencing is more about this war in Ukraine more than it is about all the money printing they have done. Americans are hearing there's $2 trillion in this rescue package, that it is the largest economic stimulus measure in modern American history. Good morning, Mike. Yeah, after months of delays, disputes, and what seemed like endless debate, Congress finally cleared a $900 billion coronavirus relief package just before midnight last night, and with it, a $1.4 trillion bill that funds the government through the fiscal year. The final vote in the House was 359 to 53. The Senate passed it 92 to 6. In his primetime address tonight, President Biden will tout Congress passing his nearly $2 trillion relief bill. Here we go. A legislative victory that he and Vice President Harris celebrated Wednesday at the White House. This bill represents a historic, historic victory for the American people. But no Republicans supported the bill, arguing that following a string of other relief packages, the government is spending far too much money. Yeah, I showed you that because I want you to remember that over a year during the pandemic, they printed over $5.1 trillion dollars adding that all to our money supply. You can't just forget this and ignore it when looking at inflation. And they're passing another $1.5 trillion probably by the time this video is released. But for some reason, we're only looking outside of this country as the reason why we're experiencing high inflation. Biden continually makes the claim that inflation is about the supply chain and Russia. That's it. And never even acts like it's even possible that inflation could be due to all the stimulus money printed and handed out. As you know, uh, Ken, um, the inflation has everything to do with the supply chain. That back them. We understand Putin's war against the people of Ukraine is causing prices to rise. We get that. That's self-evident. But they're just manipulating our minds to focus on what they want us to focus on. Though many people like me have been warning on the consequences of printing all the stimulus money when it was happening. I can't even keep up with all the stimulus they are pumping. We are in our third stimulus bill. There was the CARES Act for $1.8 trillion passed in March of 2020. Then we had the Omnibus Spending and COVID Relief Bill passed in December of 2020 that was for $1.4 trillion. And now they are working on passing the third bill, the American Rescue Plan Stimulus Bill for $1.9 trillion just three months after the last trillion. That's a total of $5.1 trillion in just a year, just on extra money that they want to use to stimulate the economy. The masses only hear how much money they are receiving in their checks and are not considering where all this money is actually coming from and who's gonna pay for it later. But you should. All this money printing has consequences and it is just leading to a bigger bubble. The United States dollar is the world reserve currency but they are printing it like it has very little value. Inflation is already happening, but people aren't recognizing it. The Fed even admitted that there is inflation. Those low oil prices are rising. They are seeing $4 gas in California right now. Prices are slowly rising on items all across the country, but it's happening very quietly. Stores are raising the prices incrementally. Businesses are raising the rates for service. Food is costing more. People just don't recognize how much change is upon them. Understand, what is happening at this present time is making sure our minds are accepting the narrative so that we are carefully walked into their new world that they are preparing. This is not about Putin more than it is about collapsing the current world order and system. And more important than that, they must keep your minds attached to the agenda, guiding your thoughts so that you can feel the emotions you are being led to feel. Now, there are many different scenarios for possible reasons of escalation. So I will not speculate on how I think it all will happen. I will just tell you what I expect. I am expecting China, Iran, and North Korea to somehow be brought into this war and agenda soon. And they will not be on the side of the West either. You see, the sides of World War III have already been drawn. We know what the sides are. The world is heading to war. 
they are even speaking that if they put a no-fly zone over Ukraine, that that will spark World War III. So basically, a no-fly zone, it, uh, if people understood what it means, it means World War III. It means starting World War III, so... Again, just priming the people for this major conflict. But the masses can't put two and two together. With what they have done and are doing with the world financial system, the fiat currency system is all but done. I mean, they have completely collapsed the Russian ruble, a fiat currency. But what Russia has been doing for years is buying gold, hedging against the fiat currency system. So in this great narrative, his responses to the sanctions could and should be more different than the media is helping us to believe. And Biden also just gave an executive order to review if he needs to go to Congress to issue a digital currency. Under the order, the government will coordinate efforts with financial regulators to get a better understanding of the risks and benefits of cryptocurrencies. The directive also calls for the exploration and consideration of creating a digital form of the U.S. dollar. You must understand that they wouldn't be speaking about these things if the dollar was still strong and sound. Now, all of those are geopolitical risks for the world. But here in the United States, I do have expectations as well. I expect internal problems. We've been distracted from it since the election, but I still believe that there is a civil war brewing in this country. And with gas prices and food prices going as high as they are getting, I expect conflict to escalate. There are a lot of people that have never been broke before that are really experiencing financial pain. I expect conflict to escalate. I expect protest, high levels of crime, and probably, unfortunately, an innocent black life lost that would stir up the same anger we saw two years ago. But it doesn't matter really what sparks it. I expect civil war in this country. This country is not united, just at this time distracted from its division. There's a difference. But as people can't afford to live, there will be an uprising of the poor against the rich, the have-nots against the haves. I expect geopolitical conflict to escalate around the world and within the United States and probably many other countries around the world, I expect the same civil war script and narrative to ensue as well. We are in a powder keg. Those are my expectations. World war and civil war. We are being walked into chaos and you must be ready for it. Spiritually first and above all, but then mentally. Because every day, soon as you open your eyes, this is how the war is being waged against you. A prison for your mind. Understand that with the banning of Russian oil and gas, everything in this country is about to get more expensive. And because of how they are masking the issue, we don't know if it's because of general inflation, because of the money printing, or because of how high gas prices are, or both. But the cause doesn't really matter. When you see gas prices go up, that means that it costs more for everything. To get products on the shelves, it costs truck drivers right now almost $2 more per gallon. Do you actually think companies are eating that cost? No, they're passing it on to us. For everyone to get to work right now, it's costing more and more daily. And on top of all this, the Fed plans are raising rates next week. We are in the beginning of an economic storm while war is being provoked. Cyber attacks on our electric grid and financial systems are being warned of. They're saying New York City is on ultra high alert. When dealing with this, it's important to have the right mindset in this mental war. So that's why I keep repeating the same thing because the news will just keep telling you that all of this is just about Russia. But in fact, this is about the collapse in the value of the dollar and fiat currencies and the changing into a new world system. But mental manipulation pushes the blame where they want it to go, and it doesn't give people the right mindset to actively and properly prepare for it. I am actively preparing for hard times ahead. I understand where this is all going, and I do not have false expectations. Do not allow them to keep you on their timeline and their schedule. Right now, the general public is still calm and not panicking. But trust, as you see these gas and food prices rise, it will be too late for you to prepare. They will start putting quantity limits on food and toilet paper 
and the shells will have less and less. If you want more of a perspective, try to remember how things were the first month of the pandemic and understand it will be worse than that. If you are not prepared, you will lose your chance to be. So you should be getting your house in order now while the people are still asleep. Because when the panic button gets pushed, you do not want to be amongst the crowd. This is all scripted, so be proactive rather than reactive. This is an important mindset that you should have. But this is a mental war, so you must be mentally on guard for it. They are feeding the general public with all the thoughts that they want us to have on the subject of inflation and the war in Ukraine. It is a part of the great narrative. If your thoughts are more aligned with what you hear from mainstream media, you must seriously take a step back and review what it is that you believe. You have to be honest with yourself. You see, they don't hide that they are forming a narrative, but they just don't broadcast it on CNN either. Klaus Schwab, founder and executive chairman of the World Economic Forum, author of COVID-19, The Great Reset, which I speak about often in these videos, he recently wrote another book that he released last month of February. It's called The Great Narrative for a Better Future. In this book, he says a lot of things. But what is most important pertaining to this discussion is what he said about narratives. On page nine, he says, narratives are how we make sense of life. They provide us with context. Compelling narratives have the power to inspire us to act. I want you to understand that this is the way that you are being communicated to and how you are being steered and directed. I'm going to do everything I can to minimize Putin's price hike here at home. What is happening and what you're being told is not about truth or facts. It's about narratives. You are being fed a great narrative and it will be repeated over and over until the majority around you believes it. And after it is believed, then they can lead you in any direction that they want to take the story. It doesn't matter if the story or narrative is true or not. It just matters if they get you to believe in it. Does that remind you of anything else that has happened over the last couple of years? Going back to the book, on page 15, Schwab wrote, A new world, not a new normal, is now emerging. The contours of which will largely be defined by the narratives that evolve to inform and construct the way forward. It means that we live today on the brink of major consequential changes that are not independent from each other, but are taking place simultaneously with their risk concatenated, i.e. linked together, reinforcing one another through cascading and contagion effects. Pay attention. He literally just said we're on the brink of major consequential changes and they're not independent from each other, but they're all happening simultaneously. Like he said, a new world is now emerging. On page 20, he writes, Robert Schiller, the father of narrative economics, goes one step further, linking narratives to the decisions we make. The human brain has always been highly tuned towards narratives whether factual or not, to justify ongoing actions. Narratives provide the context in which the facts we observe can be interpreted, understood, and acted upon. In that sense, they equate to much more than the stories we tell, write, or illustrate figuratively. They end up being the truths or the ideas we accept as truths that underpin the perceptions that shape our realities, and in the process form our cultures and societies. Through narratives, we explain how we see things, how these things work, how we make decisions and justify them, how we understand our place in the world, and how we try to persuade others to embrace our beliefs and values. To sum up, narratives shape our perceptions, which in turn form our realities and end up influencing our choices and actions. They are how we find meaning in life. <laughs> and this is what you need to understand. You are being fed a narrative. It doesn't matter whether it's factual or not. They are giving us narratives to help shape and form our realities. They're not relying on facts. 
I mean, you don't really see what is happening in Ukraine. You're hearing their narratives. As a matter of fact, they cut off all social media and anything directly reporting from that area that is not from the mainstream news. So you really don't know what is actually happening there besides what mainstream media has been telling you. It's about their narratives. They're feeding you narratives. And it's important that you understand that when you're listening to the news, because people actually listen to this stuff as facts, but it's about narratives. And if you do not get that into your understanding, you will be led astray. They are feeding the world with narratives that is leading to either death or the introduction into the new world system. They are keeping everyone distracted and following the narrative that will lead to a collapse of the world system geopolitically, economically, technologically, environmentally, and most important, religiously. And like I just showed from a quote in his book, Klaus Schwab, the founder and executive chairman of the World Economic Forum, has alluded to this. It is important to really have a strong grasp and handle on reality. You need to really make sure that you are not allowing yourself to be led astray in this false illusion that they have created. There was a scene in that horrible Matrix 4 movie in which he said that the people like his world. They don't want Neil's sentimentality. They want to be controlled. The sheeple, he actually said this, the sheeple want his world that he created for them. And it's absolutely true. The sheeple aren't going anywhere. They like my world. They don't want this sentimentality. They don't want freedom or empowerment. They want to be controlled. People want the controlling narrative that is leading them to slaughter because it is the world that they are capable of dealing with. You need strength and conviction to make sure that that is not you. There is a difference between knowing the truth and deciding to live through it. Living awake in this world right now is extremely difficult, but you must choose to live in the truth than live through their lies. I am not able to live amongst those that desire to grow within this fallen world. I mean, if my adult children choose this world, they can have it. If my parents or siblings choose this world, they can have it. If my friends and family choose this world, they can have it. Now, don't mistake me. This doesn't stop me from trying to reach them if Father puts it on my heart. But I cannot and will not live in the lie with the rest of this world. And if people are consistently choosing the lie more than living in the truth, then there will be an inevitable separation in many relationships with me. And it's happening right now. As a believer today, you must seriously fight this battle for your mind. It's very hard to live in reality because the fake world that they are giving us is promoted everywhere. I mean, how do you live in the truth when everything you see is based on lies? How do you know what to trust and what not to? I'll tell you what I do. I don't believe any of it. Like I just showed and explained through Klaus Schwab's book, I look at this world and a majority of things that are happening in it as a big movie and everybody is playing their roles in it. They're actors. Like, you believe that President Biden is the most important person in this world or in the room because you believe in that narrative. But all we ever see a president do is read speeches, sign bills, and give media interviews. And actually, we rarely see Biden do two of those three. But think about it. We never see their true negotiations and who are actually in the meetings and what the details are that they're actually negotiating. Like they talk about the Iran deal. Does anybody understand the actual specifics that take so long to negotiate this deal? Understand, the presidents of every country are borrowers. Why focus on the borrower when the lender is always more powerful? <laughs> I was arguing in a text group with some friends because some of them actually believed the narrative that Putin was one of the wealthiest men on earth. <laughs> I mean, even though they really couldn't explain how. They believed it because the media told them to. You really think Putin is the richest man in the world? I really think that. And, and I'm not just saying that crazily. Get I mean, estimate his net worth. 200 billion. Really? I believe that it's 200 billion. That would make Putin almost two and a half times wealthier than the man whom Forbes says is the world's wealthiest, Bill Gates. Oh. But I have spoken with these same friends for years about the real hidden wealth and control in this world. 
One of the friends actually called that real wealth a distraction. <laughs> they watched my video about breaking out of the matrix, following the money, which broke down where the real wealth of this world is. They have been introduced to the truth, but they can't see past what the great narrative is feeding them. They know the truth, but never decided to live through it. There is a difference. So for me in dealing with this world, I don't focus on what the president or other world leaders do because that's a fake reality forcing my mind to focus on lies. I follow narratives, not because they are true, but watching where they are taking the lie. If you know where the world is going, you do not need to focus on the day by day moves. I live with the end in mind and do not allow myself to get distracted by what they want me to believe. What's the point of Bible prophecy if you're not going to believe in it? Now, does that mean don't pay attention to the world around you? Absolutely not. This is not what that means at all. But you must not believe in their lies and their false system. So there are principles I use when paying attention to events, and I'll share them with you, so hopefully it helps you. Number one, if everyone is saying the same thing, I do not listen to it. I identify it quickly and say, that's a program. You see, if I turn to each news channel and they are all suggesting the same thought, I know they are pushing a mind control narrative. When I engage in this mindset and say, this is a program, it stops the mind control from working. Number two, ask questions and try to get answers. The thing these people like to do today is tell you what you need to know. I get alerts from CNN saying what you need to know. But who decides what I need to know? <laughs> I don't focus on headlines. I focus on details. I ask questions and try to engage in critical thinking. This is a habit you must actively do. When you work like this, your mind is actively working and it doesn't allow the program that they are running to stick. Number three, I live with the mindset of being set apart. <laughs> I'm not trying to get in where I fit in. I'm not trying to carve out my rightful place in this society that they're building. No, I'm trying to remain the same while the world continues to change. I'm in the world, but I'm not of it. I am not tied to the fate everyone else shares. Make sure you are that way too. Number four, I don't care about what they argue over in politics. I care about what they all agree to. These people act as if they hate each other all day. But then, when a real agenda pops up, they can agree to pass certain laws. Those laws, especially the bipartisan ones, should be paid attention to. Like, Republicans have not agreed on anything that Biden has proposed since he was in office. But everyone is in firm agreement to the moves against Russia. So I know this is an agenda that will affect me. Number five, I don't play political dissensions or even international dissensions. Everyone in control is on the same team behind the scenes, so I don't care what they try to tell me in front of the cameras. Period. It's all a game. It's a narrative. Why am I paying attention to the sides? And if you really understand the money behind it, you understand that those people finance both sides. So no matter what happens, they are in control of the outcome. Number six. I follow the agenda behind the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. I have read and studied their goals, and I understand what their desired intent for this world is. It makes all actions that are happening around the world make sense. You see, if more people understood those goals, then everything happening in the world right now would make so much more sense. But the news is not reporting on that. They're not talking that the world is moving toward the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. No, you don't get that. They are just creating the narratives for it. What is happening in this world is tied to this main agenda. And they are using the great narrative to direct our minds into accepting it all when it all comes together. Number seven. There is no longevity in this current scheme. This is important. And it's so hard for people to really understand. So many people that I know are playing this long, drawn out game when the whole board of the game is about to change. I don't think about 10 or 20 
or 30 years from now? Because the world will be changed drastically before that time comes. I do not have anything in common with people who are working towards these long-term goals. Like, I know people still focusing on buying a home while the whole world financial system is being attacked. It makes no sense. I know people focusing on getting these college degrees when they're paying people at Target close to $25 an hour. This education system does not matter. Many people who never went to college are doing drastically better than people that did. But people can't see past the mental conditioning around the world education system that tells you that you need to go to college. Number eight, the majority is against me, not for me. I know this to be true and I lived through this. This is not because of who I am, not because of the color of my skin, but because of what I believe. I am a part of the biggest minority in the world and I do not expect this world to protect my views and my right to believe. My beliefs, along with my bloodline, means that the world is completely against me, so I act accordingly. Number nine, this world is controlled by Satan. So when I see anyone propped up and supported by the system, I know they have sold out in some fashion, some more severe than others. And when I see someone badmouthed and ashamed, it's because they didn't follow the program, or they went off course, or their contract is up. This is the case for everyone, except with people like Donald Trump, Alex Jones, and Putin, the people that they're using for controlled opposition. Number 10, everything we see about this Ukraine war is about the collapse of the old world order. I do not need to get on any side of it. The only side I am on is on the side of my father in heaven. Now there are probably more principles that I have, but that's all I can think of right now. This is the way I viewed things. You can agree or disagree with them, but I try to make it my habit to not be a mind controlled puppet to this wicked world system. And these are some of the mindsets I hold in order for this not to take place. I've placed this guidance on a PDF for you to download. The link is in the description box. You have to be extremely diligent in guarding and protecting your mind. It is very important that you understand what you are dealing with out here with the masses. I have to remind myself of this constantly. Everyone is not coming with me. Many people I know will go down with this sinking ship. I can keep trying to warn everyone that the ship is sinking and the building is on fire, but the people don't want to deal with that reality. I have a close member of the family that always stops me from exposing things to her. She rather just not know because ignorance is bliss to her. If I'm about to show her something, she always stops me. I'm like, I don't want to know about this. She's not ready or willing to deal with reality. There is a difference with knowing the truth than making the decision to live through it. But listen, what is actually going on in this world is spiritual and it has not changed, but it has been amplified. During the times of COVID, I explained about the strong delusion. But now, after everyone took that solution, it seems that people have fell even harder into the strong delusion. Remember, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9 through 12 says, the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason, Elohim will send them strong delusion, that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth that had pleasure in unrighteousness. Here's the big thing to understand. These people that believe these lies are caught in this mental war because they are caught up worse in the spiritual war. They loved unrighteousness more than Yah's truth. They love this world more than they love Yah's kingdom. They love the lie more than they love the truth. And I'm not just talking about the lies in this great narrative, but more so the lies about our creator and his solution for our redemption. They love to ignore the truth about our creator and his plan of salvation for us. You see, they did not receive his truth. Therefore, they are caught in the lie. And that is the real message behind what I am trying to say. 
When I kept saying there is a difference with knowing the truth than making the decision to live through it, that is not just about knowing about the lies and the false truths about this world. That is important, but that is not what is keeping people's minds free from this mental war. The mental war cannot be fought without fighting the spiritual one. You see, there's a lot of people that like to focus just on the conspiracies. They like to say, this is what's happening. This is what's happening here. But then they still fall for the main lies when it comes about. It's because they are not spiritually guarded. It doesn't matter if you understand these false narratives, these false lies, these conspiracies, everything that is working against us. If you do not understand the spiritual battle and engage in your only solution and believe in your only answer. There are so many people that know of Yahusha. They understand he is the propitiation of our sins, but not just for us, but for the whole world. That's 1 John chapter 2, verse 2. All of these fully church people, people that have been going to church all their lives, who have accepted Yahusha, Jesus, as their master and savior, they knew the truth, but decided not to live through it. Understand it. Let me say it again. They knew the truth. They just decided not to live through it. It's important that you understand that. And because they chose not to live in the truth, they have not been able to fully protect themselves from all of these lies. And like the scriptures I just read in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 says, all of this is about the coming of the lawless one, according to the working of Satan. So if we're being honest, we clearly understand where this is all leading. So my plea to you is a very sincere one. Please submit to Yah and live through his truth. You cannot pick and choose what reality you want to live in. This strong delusion is literally another world. It's not reality. It's not the real world. It is just the world that you are trained to believe in because you have left yourself unprotected in the spiritual world and you don't really understand the spiritual battle at hand prison for your mind let's step into reality here gas prices are going up yeah food prices going up absolutely it's going to be worse than you expect it to be right now we are just being cooked like frogs with them gradually increasing the temperature on us until we are so numb we won't be able to move out of their plans and schemes what is happening right now just more of a wake-up call for you and you should understand that if you had taken advice heard in these videos for years you probably may have been better equipped to fight the battle that is coming at us that's because it is not you who is fighting this battle it is yah you need to put on your full armor and walk and live in his truth we know that we are of elohim and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one and we know that the son of Elohim has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true in his son, Yahusha, the Messiah. This is the true Elohim and eternal life. That's first John chapter five, verses 19 and 20. So many people are falling for this world agenda, being prepared for the Antichrist because they refuse to understand just how much the scripture is true and live through the truth that this world lies under the sway of the wicked one. They want to understand that there are agendas and evil things happening. They maybe even want to acknowledge that there are many truths to many of the warning bells that have been ringing, but they do not want to live in the truth. They know that the world is completely against Yahusha and his children, but they do not want to live in the truth of what that means for them. They know that the world is moving towards a new world order and the coming rise of the beast, the Antichrist. But they do not want to live in the truth of Yah and understand what that actually looks like. They understand the truth of this, but they don't want to make the sacrifices that they need in order to live in this truth. There is a difference between knowing the truth and the decision to walk in the truth. There are many of us that have been unfazed and unaffected spiritually and mentally by the wicked schemes that have been coming at us since the agenda around the pandemic happened. We chose to live in the truth more than just know it and recognize it. And let me tell you, it is such a wonderful gift of freedom. 
like Yahushua said to the Jews who believed in him in John chapter 8, verse 32. If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Hallelujah. Do you want to be free? Do you want to be separated from what is coming to this world? Do you want to be under the covering of the Most High? You should. But this cannot and will not happen if you choose to live amongst the lies. If you choose to be consistently distracted. If you choose to ignore what Yah is revealing to you. If you choose to ignore that tugging on your heart that he has been giving you. If you choose to keep your eyes closed and your mind wide open and attached to the propaganda and the lies. If you choose to follow the direction the world is moving. If you choose to move in that direction, you are choosing to move away from the will of the Most High. Yes, you must know the truth. But understand, while it's important to know it, you must live in it also. This isn't a game. This life that we're living through is not a game. Please remember, there is a difference between knowing the truth and the decision to walk in the truth. Live in the truth and stay connected to Yah. Your time is running out. Be blessed. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Okay. Thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please make sure to like it and share it with others. If you haven't done so already, please make sure to subscribe to this channel. Elohim willing, I upload every Friday. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel on Facebook and Instagram, as well as on my website, truthunedited.com. As always, I'd like to give a special thank you to all who donate and contribute to this ministry. Your contributions are a true blessing to this ministry and help very much. Thank you for your love and support and letting our Father use you. You are truly a blessing and I really appreciate your support. Be blessed. Okay, thanks again everyone for watching. I love you all.